What's going on YouTube? This is Mega Bob sitting here again with another quick video. So today's video is about if your Crown Vic is throwing multiple check engine codes, all kinds of codes, talking about EVAP system, misfiring, I mean just random codes all over the place. And if your car is shutting off while driving today I have a fix that works for me and it might possibly help you guys out okay so here I have my 2005 Ford Crown Victoria police interceptor and for a long time I would say about six months or more Well, maybe about four or five months, I guess. My Crown Vic was acting really crazy. Um, first, I started getting uh, P0443 and 446 codes. And then, um, next thing I know, the car would just shut off while I was driving it. Um, and I thought it might be the PCM, which is right here. I tried, uh, replacing it with a junkyard PCM, which made it run worse. Apparently you got to get it programmed, so that didn't work. Then, um, after I took the PCM apart, or I took the PCM out, I uh, put it. I tried to take the PCM apart, but it, there's no screws to take it apart. And I wanted to check inside and see if there's any like damage or whatever. So it didn't work. So I just put the PCM back in, and then my car would not start. I thought it might be the starter, so I put a new starter, new ignition switch. I put a new neutral safety switch on it, and um, still wouldn't start. And then I had my son get in there and try to crank the car and I move these wires right here around and apparently it was uh, one of these wires right here it's like uh, that that wire right there the one in the middle it's one of these wires that sends a signal to the starter I can't remember which one it was so when I bend, what I would take, what I do is I'd take this and I'd bend it, and then the car would start. So that was cool. I got the car started, but it would still shut off on me. It would run like crap. Um, start getting a lot of backfire, fuel smell. I threw some sea foam in here. That helped a little bit, but then it would start dying out again. So what I did. And I mean, this might be the, you know, a drastic measure for you guys. Because I know that there was something going on here at this wiring harness, right? So what I did is I went to the junkyard and I just pulled an entire wiring harness off another Crown Vic. Same year model as mine. And it's, it's, it goes with these two connectors right here and here. And you see it all leads down to this one connector. And you can see it goes down there, and it goes around here. It goes to your uh, all your injectors and your uh, coil packs, and it goes down here to your power steering, which is way down there. And then this, uh, it, I mean, it connects to everything. It connects here, it goes to your alternator, throttle body. All this shit is on the same wiring harness. Right, this wiring harness goes down there, it goes around, and I'm gonna go around the car right here. This is the same wiring harness right here. You can see it back, it's uh, that fat one down there. Basically, it goes around the motor because there it is, right? It goes around there, comes back, 
goes around the car and on this side it also connects to your connects to your uh, coil packs and your fuel injectors everything like that um, goes to your AC high pressure low pressure side it goes down here I mean, it goes to everything basically right so and also you got a tail there's a tail on this connect on this heart on this wiring harness and see if I can find the tail uh, it's kind of hard to find because let me see here uh, there it is so the tail of it is right down in here like right past your dipstick for your transmission it's back there that's the tail down there and it goes under the car I can't really touch it but you see where my finger's pointing it goes under the car and that goes to your neutral safety switch it goes around the transmission and everything anyways so what I did is I just pulled the entire wiring harness off another Crown Vic and I replaced it I replaced my old wiring harness and replaced it with this one and everything's running perfect now. No check engine lights, no shutting off, no misfires, nothing. So, I know there's gonna be some people out there to say, well, you could have diagnosed it and figured out exactly what wire it was and all that shit. But you know what? I decided I'm just gonna replace the whole damn thing because I'm getting codes from every system imaginable. Throttle body codes, evap codes, um, misfire codes, everything. So I replaced the entire wiring harness and it totally worked. So if your guys' this car is shutting off, giving you multiple codes, you take it somewhere and they say it's not even communicating with their equipment, Replacing that wiring harness is really easy. The hardest part is getting it around the transmission under the car. Because it splits into a Y back there and you got to get it around both sides of the transmission. But you can figure it out. It's not hard. But if your car is doing all that, I recommend just changing the entire wiring harness out. It took me like 30 minutes to get the wiring harness off an old older another uh, Crown Vic and it took me like two hours tops to get the wiring harness back on but for that a time that I spent I have no problems now so if you guys have any problems like that I mean this car had misfires from the day that I bought it is that can stupid misfire number eight and all that you guys can see my videos about that, but I recommend checking out your, just checking out getting another wiring harness. Just replace the whole damn thing. Because to trace the wire down and figure out which wire it is and all that, you don't know. I mean, so like, you got these wires right here. You don't know where the wiring problem is. I mean, okay, so I figured that mine obviously was in the connection, right? So when I would bend the wires, it would start, and sometimes it would run better. So I figured, okay, obviously most of my problems are probably coming from this connection right here, which normally sits down in there like that, right? So if you're looking at it from this angle, it sits down in there like that. But I said, you know what, I don't feel like pulling these wires out and doing all that. So I just replaced the whole damn thing. If you want to try to pinpoint which wires it is that's causing the problems, then that's on you. But I just replaced the whole harness, and it works great. So that's my little video to tell you guys about, you know, the problems that I had, that I've been having. I mean, because when this car shuts off on you, like, it would shut off, like, I mean, I've taken the kids to school because my wife's car was down, got in an accident. So I'm taking the kids to school in the morning. It was shut down so many times. It was embarrassing. But now I have no check engine light. I'll come over here. You guys can see. 
I'll crank it up. Um, well, it's not cranking up right now. I don't know why. Did I disconnect the battery or something? So what's going on? Oh. My negative terminal popped off somehow. Put that back on there. Okay. So now, I'll go in here, crank it up, get this down. As you can see, no check engine light. Now you see that ABS signal it's on right there? I'm pretty sure I got a video online about this, but after I uh, messed with that wiring harness and stuff, I would bend it and things like that, and I put the new, all the shit on. For some reason, I lost turn signals, I lost power steering, and my uh, blower motor wouldn't work when I would turn this on. So I looked in the book for turn signal fuse, and turn signal fuse is this one right here okay it's a 15 amp that's the turn signal fuse now if you remove this fuse box down that fuse box has got a power wire going into it and also a signal wire so what I did is I tapped into that with a bobby pin See if I can get a better view on it. Hang on. I tapped into it. I don't know why there's no power going to it, but for right now, I tapped into that. I came up here to my ignition switch. I tapped into the actual uh, the red the red wire right there. I got a bobby pin going in there. Cause right now you see if I turn my turn signal on, I got nothing. All right? So all I do is I put two bobby pins in there, I got this little alligator clip. And then all I gotta do is I clip it on to here. Right? And that that pin's going into the red wire, that big fat red wire over there. You guys can see that. Let me turn the camera around. That bobby pin is going into that red wire. Okay. That red wire supplies a constant 12 volts to this ignition switch, which is right here. You see here this ignition switch, right? Got your ignition switch right here. Okay. And then your turn signal fuse is the one that I just showed you down here. Right here, that one. 15 amp. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Fuse number 16, right there. And you'll turn the, you'll turn the box over. And that fuse has got that thick wire right there going into it and another little signal wire coming out of it. So I hooked into there and now, now I got turn signals and also our ABS light went off. And now I got power steering and my blower motor works. I don't know why it's not getting power I haven't dug into it that much, but if anybody has any ideas why that thing's not getting power, I would really love to hear it. I think it might be possible up here at the switch that that that, that red wire is not is not transferring power because the power is supposed to come from there. You see this wire right here this yellow with gray on it 
that's the power wire that goes down here, which is this one right here. Same wire. That's where we're supposed to get this power from. And for some reason, I'm not getting power to that wire. So I just kind of jumped it. I just probed directly into the into the power. Right there, you can see my pin is in there. Right? My pin is in there. And now I got all that stuff. So other than that, the car's running great. And only thing I gotta do is when I turn the car off, I gotta remember to unplug that wire right there. Because if I don't, it'll drain the battery and then I won't start it the next day. I have no idea why that wire's not getting power. I might try a new ignition switch. Um, see how that does. But I did try a new ignition switch in the beginning. And I'm pretty sure I had the same issues. So. Oh yeah, so basically I just stole power from there and just sent it directly to that fuse and everything works fine. And now I got turn signals, you know, blower motor works. So, if you guys are having these same issues with your Crown Vic, it's stalling while you're driving, it just shuts off, misfiring, evap codes throttle body throttle uh throttle control codes all kinds of different codes i recommend just replacing that wiring harness it's really not hard i mean i did it in a day so if you if i can do it i know you guys can do it so that's just my little take on it you know what i mean and uh i'm not a professional mechanic I, I am mechanically inclined and I figured instead of trying to replace one or two wires I just replaced the whole damn thing and uh, it's worked out so my car runs great I mean I got power everything no check engine lights while I'm driving so you guys might want to try that 